Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, we are going to be making some very large nails, or spikes as I like to call them. I'm using these because I gotta do some um, fix up work here at the shop. And as you can see behind me, my shop is not made with a traditional framing. It is made with really traditional framing using beams and such of that nature. So I need to take and nail some stuff together. So I need to make some really big nails. So that's what we'll be doing today. We're starting with a piece of three eighths inch square bar stock that's eight inches long in total. So uh, just so you know what those measurements are. Now roughly the, the length that you cut this, and we'll get, to, get into this in a minute, the length that you cut this will be the length of the established nail after you're done doing all your work, drawing out your tip and upsetting the head. So if you start with eight inch, you're gonna end up with roughly an eight inch long uh, nail. So keep that in mind. Uh, for future reference, say if you wanna make some a big old 12 inch long spike out of half inch square bar stock, then you need to start with at least a 12 inch piece of material in order to take and make that nail. So without further ado, let's get this hot and we'll go through the very first step of making these large spikes. Okay, so here's a little closer look at the spike that we're going to be making. We have a one inch taper on this end. Now this is a flat taper and it is a symmetrical taper. Um, as you can see, it is the same width as the parent bar stock on this side but it tapers down on the opposite of the parent bar stock here. As you can see, we've got a fairly nice four clout nail head here. That's what we're going for. And we want that nail head to be roughly centered in the piece if you can. Now, it doesn't really matter that much. This is getting beaten into wood. And the only thing you're gonna see is the nail head. You won't see if it's a little off center. Uh, so if you get it off center, it doesn't really matter when it comes to these, um, just because again, all of this is gonna be hidden by wood. And the only thing you're gonna see is just the four clout nail head sticking out. So make that look nice at least, even if this gets a little off side, off center, off true. As you can see, we're not using a nail header today. Um, there's no need in using a nail header. A nail header uses a wedging like principle in order to take and grip the nail to be able to upset the head. With something this big, it's really cumbersome to have a gigantic nail header. So what we're gonna use, we're gonna use the vise instead. So I'm gonna set this off the side. I'll bring out my first piece here. And we're gonna take and stick roughly double a cube of material out the top here to make that nail head. So about twice as much in length as the thickness is wide. Then we're gonna drive this down to the vise. Now we're gonna start establishing our fork clout. It might take a little bit for you to play with this to get your point in the middle and get your facets to look nice. But again, you can make this as pretty as you like. but we want it to be roughly centered. Now, if you notice, this has picked up a bit of a bend and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna correct for that here in just a second. But there we go, we got a nice head there. And now we're ready to take and do our taper. We will do our taper, uh, we will do our taper last. Now, you can do it either or. You can go ahead and upset this and then taper, um, or you can taper and then upset this. Choice is yours, I find for security's sakes. Um, just in case I need to adjust this, I like to be able to do the head first. That way, if anything goes crazy wrong there, uh, you know, um, I'm not dealing with already putting the effort into making a taper. So to square this up, as you can see, we have a bit of an angle here. We're gonna drop it back in the vise, but just proud of the vise here. And we are going to hit on the high side. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit on that high side. And by the time it comes down to that vise, is gonna bring everything back square and true, or should. If it didn't, we can go at it again. But as you can see, it's brought it back square and true. So that's what we're looking for. So next step, let's go to the anvil and finish this spike off. Price Centered Ironworks is sponsored by blacksmithsupply.com and viewers like you. Be sure to check out blacksmithsupply.com for all your forging needs. Now back to the video. Okay, now to make our one, 
our one-sided taper for our nail or our chisel point. We're gonna start by driving a good amount of material this way to where we create a nice little chisel, but you can see it kind of flares a little bit. Well, then we're gonna turn that up and then that, this side here is where we're gonna actually establish our flat chisel point. Square it up to the bar stock. We're looking for about a one inch taper. Doesn't really matter how much, what the point looks like, just as long as it's roughly a one inch taper and it's true to the original bar stock in one, uh, one direction. See there, nice little one inch taper and it's all on one side. So if you're forging down thin material, this is a little pro tip here in this video, if you're one of the fortunate people that have an attention span longer than a gnat and have watched to this point, here's a little pro tip for you. Whenever you're forging down, let's say if you want to forge down a thinner bar stock, let's say in like a fishtail scroll, if you will, um, or like a ribbon scroll, and you want to keep it the same as the parent bar stock, but you want it to taper in one plane. The way you'd go about doing that is like what we did here. I'll get another spike hot and I'll show you. That spike's done. I mean, I've got some other spikes in the fire I'm working on right now. Let me grab one. You start by, make, think about this theoretically like as if this was a rectangle instead of a square. You start on one side, orienting, orientating your material, all right, thinning it down in profile first. Then you come back and you finish the thickness that you're after. This is a lot quicker way of getting to your final shape and form with the least amount of hammer blows possible. Otherwise, what you end up doing is you end up chasing this taper back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you might end up with an end that is smaller in width than what you intended. So if you dress the width first, because as we forge it out from the uh, top and bottom, it's going to spread the material. So if we address that spreading of material, pre-address it to begin with, it will spread back to being in plane with the original parent bar stock. So hopefully that'll help you with your tapers. It's a quicker way of getting to the same result and it's much more efficient. Um, you'll run into it as a problem if you ever do really thin small work uh, because there's not a lot of mass for you to keep pushing back and forth. You kind of got to get it right within a few strokes. But there we have it, there's another spike. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, thank you to all the great channel members that make the content on this channel possible. God bless each and every last one of you. And I hope you guys have fun making these in your shop, if you so do need them. Take care.